For years, Audio Control has focused their offering to be specialists within the amplifier, DSP, and sound processing categories. But lately, they've gone off the reservation and now have expanded their offering to include full range of speakers as well as subwoofers. We've got Matthew Palumbo in the studio with us, and we're going to get all the details you need to know about the brand new offering from Audio Control. This is CMA Networks presented by SiriusXM, all about audio control. And it starts now. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another CMA Network session here brought to you by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu, and today we are dissecting the brand known as Audio Control, who's been making a fuss since launching their brand new category of product, of course, now in full range speakers, as well as two subwoofer offerings. Matt, I know we've been waiting to do this one. We're going to dive deep today, but give us an outline of what we're going to be covering on today's session. Sure thing, Ben. I'm super excited to be here and talk to you and everyone else about the new uh, PNW series of speakers and two new lines of subwoofers from Audio Control. We've been working on this for quite some time and we are so excited to get them out there. Well, Matt, I'm just as stoked as you to get right in. But before that, we got to give an opportunity to our main sponsor, SiriusXM, to remind dealers why they love it. And when we come back, Audio Control, don't you dare go away. Hey guys, Ricky Lima here from SiriusXM. I had a chance to speak to some dealers and ask them what they love about selling Sirius XM. Here's what they had to say. Coast to coast coverage. I love Sirius XM for commercial free music. It's a great add on sale and a profit opportunity. We love selling Sirius XM because you can listen to the same channel coast to coast. Profitability and ease of installation. It's a no brainer. We love selling Sirius XM for its ease of installation, great profitability and reliability. People love it. All right, guys, we're going to dive right in. Matt, I had a s struggle with where we're going to start because we got a lot to cover. But I think a great place to begin is with the full range series of speakers that Audio Control has come up with. They're known as the PNW series. Matt, what can you tell us about this line and the kind of the process behind developing such a complete offering for full range drivers? Absolutely, Ben. We've been working on these for quite some time. Honestly, Audio Controls wanted to develop a speaker line for a long time, for years now. We started getting asked by enthusiasts years ago at uh, trade shows and things, hey, when are you guys going to do speakers? And we've always wanted to, but really didn't have the people and the resources to do it. Now that Audio Control is part of the AMP Global family of brands, we now have those people and resources. So there's a handful of people on the team that help to design these products. Um, I'm one of them. I kind of helped with some of the cosmetics and keeping the products, you know, in the Audio Control family and making them make sure that they are a true Audio Control uh, product, you know, something that we would be proud to put out. The other people involved was a gentleman named Dan Spore. He's one of our um, guys that does a lot of the industrial design, renderings, things like that. Uh, he designed things like the, you know, LC2i Pro, the Epicenter Micro, long lineage of, of uh, you know, audio control design work and, and history with AC. And the last gentleman that uh, really had a big part in this was a gentleman named Mark Chow. Mark actually was one of the uh, guys that started the company Resonant Engineering, if people remember RE Audio from back in the day. So he has a long history as well with great subwoofer design and things like that. So with uh, us three, as well as lots of others on the team, we had a pretty strong a group of guys that are working on this that were really passionate about making sure this turned into a full-fledged line of high-performance audio control products. You know, with speakers especially, we wanted to make sure that we had something that was going to be able to hold up to our amplifiers. You know, we've been pushing for years these amplifiers that deliver sometimes twice the power of our competitors. And so now that it came time to design speakers, we had to make sure that they would stand up to that amount of power, right? So there's a lot of work that went into that. And we wanted to, you know, kind of pay homage to our history and, and legacy of the audio control brand being from the Pacific Northwest. So if you're wondering where PNW comes from or Pacific Northwest series speakers, that's where we wanted to name all of these lines, things that kind of, you know, keyed in on our, uh, our, our roots, so to speak. 
You know, Matt, I love the story um, behind the development of these speakers, but it's time to show and tell. Show us what you're talking about and give us some examples of these great speakers called PNW. Absolutely, Ben. I'd be happy to. Um, you know, like we've been talking about, these PNW speakers, we really feel are something pretty special. So I'm going to start with the smallest speaker in the lineup, which is the PNW 275. Um, this is a cool little driver that's going to be used in a lot of kind of top dash applications. Um, you know, this size fits most of the modern Chrysler and Toyota vehicles, a lot of GM vehicles. Hey, a lot of manufacturers out there starting to use kind of that middler two and three quarter inch size up in the top dash. And uh, so what's cool about this PNW 275 is, you know, we talk all the time about features and specs and all that stuff. But what's important is this little guy fits in the top dash. It sounds great and it fills in that gap between a mid base driver and a tweeter. If you've ever had a system that came with a, a middler in the top dash, but you try to replace it with a tweeter, you know that it just doesn't sound right. There's something missing. And that's really where the 275 shines. Um, the PNW 275 is a, a very versatile driver too, because not only does it fit in those OEM replacement applications where you can take one out and drop one in, it even comes with an inline crossover for those exact reasons. But you can also use this to take our two-way component system and turn it into a three-way component system. We're going to talk components in a minute, but when you do that, let's say you're doing a set of uh, custom A-pillar pods or something like that. We've really tried to think this out. So, of course, it's got its little mounting tabs on there, you know, for those factory applications, things like that. But if you're going to go custom and do a set of A-pillars or something like that, you can break off these mounting tabs. And it actually comes with a attractive aftermarket grill. Okay, something that a lot of small drivers don't come with. And then what's neat is it's got an innovative mounting system where there's just a little hole here on the back, a lot like most aftermarket tweeters have. And that's exactly how you're going to mount this. It comes with a U-shaped clamp that's going to actually clamp the speaker to your mounting surface with that grill. And it makes for a really clean, attractive install where there's no mounting hardware showing whatsoever. And it allowed us to make a much smaller bezel around the outside of this grill. So you don't have this big grill for a small driver. Pretty slick. One of the other speakers that I wanted to show you real quick is the PNW-4. This is our four inch full range driver. You know, four inch speakers over the years have gone up and down in popularity as OEMs use them and don't, right? Uh, back in my early install years, we were doing Toyota trucks every day and you were putting four inch speakers in those little front dash pods, you know, on a daily basis. But then four inch speakers kind of went away for a while, I feel like, and almost nobody had them. Well, now we're starting to see them resurface, right? We're seeing the new Bronco uses a four inch speaker. Um, you know, lots of newer vehicles are starting to use a small driver in some sort of an enclosure with DSP and some power to make that vehicle sound good. So what we've done is our PNW-4 is uh, an, a pretty neat little speaker. I mean, you've got your mounting tabs here. They're all breakaway tabs. You can break off any of them that you need. But one of the things that you'll notice about not only this coaxial but all of our coaxials is that it's a point source concentric coax which means that tweeter is at the same level as the mid base uh, cone the woofer portion of the speaker so essentially without getting super deep into the techie stuff this means that the sound from the tweeter and the sound dispersed from the cone are going to hit your ears at the same time now some guys are probably rolling their eyes and going how big of a difference could that really make it actually makes a pretty big difference the other thing that's very installer friendly is this also means every coaxial we've produced does not have any tweeter protrusion whatsoever, which means you can put this flat up against the door panel or against the, the back of a factory grill or what have you. And you're not going to have any sort of clearance issues, which is huge. Um, even our, our you know input terminal tabs, we've made sure to make them attractive and also get them out of the way a little bit. Uh, it's a common issue on smaller speakers that the uh, tabs are in, in, in the way of mounting it in the hole, right? Uh, we also include grills with our four inch drivers, which a lot of companies don't do. So you're gonna get a nice audio control grill, very understated, very simple and classy, very audio control, right? So that's just an example of kind of how we do some of the smaller drivers. Now, obviously today we don't have time to drive, uh, to dive into every speaker in the lineup, but I've showed you a couple of smaller speakers now let's talk about something a little bit bigger. Let's take a look at our PNW 65 CS2. This is our two-way six and a half inch component set. Now remember, for those of you wanting to turn this into a three-way component set, you could use the PNW-275 that I showed earlier to complete the system. Um, with the C, uh, PNW 65 CS2, 
this is your standalone two-way component. So you've got a six and a half inch mid-base woofer. It's a mica coated cone, double roll rubber surround. Uh, it's a gorgeous looking speaker, but these choices weren't just made for cosmetics. These choices were also made for performance, value, and aesthetics. So when we look at these speakers, um, one of the things you'll notice is, yes, they do have a fairly beefy, big, strong magnet. We have to do that to get the performance we want and the power handling we need. But you'll also notice that they're not super deep. We made sure that the depth is such that these will fit in a number of applications, the majority of applications. Your input terminals there, woven uh, tinsel leads into the spider. Um, you've already got your gasketing material applied to the back of the speaker, so you don't have to try to do that. Um, you'll notice that it has multiple mounting points, not just four. And when we take a look at the front side, you know, just something kind of fun that we did that we loved the look of was that clear dust cap with the laser etched audio control logo behind it on the top of the pull piece. It really all adds up to a speaker that sounds really good, fits in most applications, and is really going to work well for most dealers. When we take a look at the rest of the set and kind of how that all comes together, that PMW-1 tweeter is a very attractive soft silk dome tweeter. It's an all aluminum laser etched housing. So all the logos and text that you see on that tweeter, those are not stickers, those are not silk screens, those are laser etched on there. We even went so far as to make sure that um, you know, the wiring that we use on these speakers is high quality. It's not that typical cheap, clear wire with the red stripe like so many use. Um, you know, the first time you pick this up, you'll appreciate the quality and the time and effort that went into all the details. And it's such a nice, soft, natural sounding tweeter. It's not harsh. It doesn't have a lot of those issues that um, plague some other speaker sets out there. But this whole setup can handle the power of our LC and D series amplifiers. You know, we're talking power handling in the uh, 100 watt plus range, 100 to 150 watts RMS is not going to be uncommon being ran to these component sets. So it all adds up to the PNW speaker line being high performance, high value, and really attractive from uh, just about every angle. I got to say, Matt, very exciting stuff with the entire PNW series of drivers. Lots of little Easter eggs that I, you know, we expect, honestly, from audio control. But we're going to segue this into the subwoofer lineup because there are two series that we're going to cover here that have been recently introduced. The first one being called the Spike series and the second being called the Space. Why don't we start with the Spike subwoofers? Yeah, Ben, the Spike Series subwoofers are pretty darn cool. We, um, you know, we kind of think of these as the everyday subwoofer. They're what I call the daily driver. Uh, they're a great sub, kind of a good all-arounder that can do a little bit of everything. You know, I mean, they can be a uh, more SQ-focused sub in like a small sealed enclosure for the moderate listener. They can be a big, boomy, loud SPL sub if we want to put them in a, you know, big vented enclosure and get the most out of them, feed them lots of power, they'll eat it up. Um, that's kind of, you know, the spike series uh, in essence. And so they've got some cool features. They've got, you know, some some great tech in them. And uh, I think they're going to be popular with a lot of dealers. Um, you know, the, the combination to me is really what makes these what they are. If you look at any one little part, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean the world to someone. But when you look at things like the power handling, uh, which is pretty high for, for what these are, you know, our eight inch version handles up to 500 watts, the 10 inch, like I've got here in front of me, the Spike uh, S2 or S4 handles up to 600 watts, and the 12 inch handles up to 700. And those are all RMS numbers because we're audio control and we don't do peak power or any of that stuff. So um, great power handling, you know, simple design. They only come in single voice coil, but you can get them in a single two or a single four. So you can still get down to whatever impedance you're looking for to extract the most power out of your amplifier, um, you know, create the perfect configuration for your system. And then, you know, some really installer friendly features, things like uh, the fact that they come with really nice mounting hardware, both coarse thread screws and machine thread screws with inserts that go into the enclosure, um, the grills that come included with every subwoofer. You know, again, now you don't have to stock them separately as a dealer and your customer doesn't have to buy them separately. Seems like a small thing, but you add all that stuff up, uh, plus the materials we've used, you know, it's a mica coated uh, paper comb. And it makes for a really nice, warm, natural sounding woofer, but it's stiff, it's light, it holds up well, just 
you know, can't say enough good things. I'm really happy with how these spike subs turned out. Um, the eight inch one is one of my personal favorites. It's so small, but just such a beefy, cool little woofer. Uh, put that in a little vented enclosure and, and just let her go. And it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. So we're very happy with how they turned out. I don't know, man. I think I'm going to have to steal that term. I like that daily drivers, uh, uh, you know, identification for the Spike series. So good on you for that one. Um, let's talk about the Space series, because obviously I'm going to guess here that space has to do with the fact that there is a lot of demand for, you know, subwoofers that can perform in small space requirements. Tell us more about the new Space series subwoofers. Yeah, Ben, you're absolutely right. I mean, every company out there basically is trying to achieve a high performance subwoofer that performs in a small space um, not only small enclosure space but thin space right today's vehicles don't have a ton of room in them um, you know most people don't want to give up all their cargo space for a subwoofer and even if they are willing to maybe they don't have to right so what we've really tried to achieve here and i think we've knocked it out of the park is a you know thin profile or shallow whatever you want to call it slim doesn't really matter uh subwoofer that is you know a high performance woofer not just a woofer that fits in a certain space and makes some bass uh, but it has to live up to the audio control name and that's exactly what we achieved so we came up with the space series subwoofers this is the 10 inch model the spc um, this is a 10 s2 so this is a single 10 inch voice coil but you can see you know we are um pretty darn thin. We are uh, just about three and a half inches of mounting depth. And again, with these woofers, you know, a lot of that same um, attention to detail and, and passion went into this project. You know, we didn't just want another thin woofer on the market with our name on it. That's not what we're about. We wanted a high performing thin woofer. These thin woofers, both 10 inch and 12 inch sizes handle up to 600 watts RMS. It's a lot of power for a slim woofer. Um, there's not a lot of other woofers out there that can take that amount of power in any sort of slim or, or thin category. Um, this woofer really performs more like a traditional woofer. And there's a lot of dealers out there right now that are rolling their eyes at that statement because they've heard it from so many brands. Uh, but I've heard this woofer, I've played with this woofer, Lots of dealers have already gotten these woofers in their hands and have started messing around with them. And I have yet to find anyone who hasn't been impressed, uh, especially at their price point. They are a super high value proposition. I mean, for the amount of power they handle, again, the sound that they put out, they don't just handle a ton of power. They sound good. You know, they don't just get loud. They sound really good, which is obviously important. Um, and the cool thing is, is they've got some some neat features packed in there. You know, again, we love the, those those little Easter eggs and neat little niche features. Um, all that stuff is in here, too. We won't spend a lot of time on that stuff today. But, you know, there's those other things that add to the whole value. The, the fact that that really nice uh, slim grill is included. And, of course, it's removable, too. If you want to see the gorgeous woofer that lies underneath, you can definitely take the grill off. We include that high quality mounting hardware, just like the Spike series. Uh, but there's a couple other things there too. This woofer, once it's mounted, can actually be used in marine or power sports applications uh, because from the front side, it's all poly materials. It's not a paper cone, it's a poly cone, and everything from the front side is completely sealed off from the back side, rubber surround, so on and so forth. So you can actually, again, once they're mounted, if you're cutting a hole in fiberglass in a, in a boat or something like that, once the woofer is mounted in there, it can be hosed off, it can be considered marine grade. We aren't really marketing the space series as, as that, but it's a it's a cool little perk um, another thing that i think is really valuable is the fact that these woofers work in a lot of different enclosures they work in of course small sealed enclosures but they also work in vented and a lot of thin woofers on the market don't work well in vented enclosures ours does so you couple that with the power handling the performance of it the sound quality and then the value uh, part of it you know this woofer performs like woofers that are three times four times the price uh i i challenge anybody give these space woofers a try and let us know what you think i think you're going to be very impressed matt literally we could stay here all day and dive even deeper into this speaker line but guess what audio control makes a lot more than that when it comes to the car audio category and some recent items that have been added to the catalog happen to be in the loc category why don't you tell us all about the new lc5i and lc7i pro yeah, Ben, so the LC5i Pro and 7i Pro are really the type of products that audio control has always been known for, right? We've always been known as a uh, high performance, you know, signal company, so to speak. 
Um, and LOCs definitely are in our wheelhouse. You know, we've made the LC2i and then the LC2i Pro, which so many of you out there have already adopted as your go-to two-channel LOC. So if you love what we did when we went from two uh, LC2i Pro to, when we went from LC2i to 2i Pro, then you're really gonna dig the 5i Pro and 7i Pro. So joining that Pro series family of products from Audio Control means a couple of things. It basically means that they include the ACR1 dash control knob, and it means that they have built-in LGDs. So when you look at these products, you'll notice right off the bat, a few things are a little different. A, you have exposed switching on these, so no more taking off top cover plates and hunting for little jumpers to move around on pins. But you'll also notice that all of those features that you need for these modern installs are readily available. So let's look at the 5i Pro first. The 5i Pro is a totally new product for us. The 5i Pro is a four-channel LOC as far as input goes, but it's a six-channel LOC when it comes to output. So this will take in four channels of high wattage, high voltage, high level input. That means we can take in up to 40 volts per channel of high level input. So we can use these with any vehicle on the road, even if it is a you know uh, vehicle that came equipped with a factory amplified premium sound system. We can still integrate with those vehicles. But really what the 5i Pro is you know, focused towards is your everyday installs where you're doing a maybe four channel amplifier and a small sub amp, or maybe you're doing a five channel amplifier. Everybody loves five channel amps for a myriad of reasons. The LC5i Pro aptly named is the perfect companion to your five channel amp installs. This will take in four channels of input, but it gives you a derived fifth and sixth channel. So if you're working with a vehicle that just has maybe two front speakers and two rear, and you don't wanna to have to use Y adapters or any of that other stuff or lose the ability to fade your factory sound system, the 5i Pro is perfect. It'll take in four channels of input, give you six channels of output to drive your system, and it's gonna give you up to 13 volts of RCA output. So you're gonna be able to feed as hot and clean a signal into that amplifier as you could possibly hope for. You'll notice things that I mentioned before, like the built-in LGDs on each channel. This means we don't need those separate load generating devices to plug in. They're just already inside. Flip the switch and away you go. You also have built-in signal summing. So if you're doing things like bringing in a high frequency signal from the front and a low frequency signal from the rear, and you need to sum those back together to get your full range output, the 5i Pro can handle it. You'll notice our turn on modes and our ground isolation. Those features are down towards the bottom. That's going to give you the ability to choose how you want to turn on the 5i Pro. We've got an answer for just about everything. And uh, the one of the most important features that many of you have come to understand and, and use daily is AccuBase. Our patented AccuBase circuit is right there on top. It's got that updated AccuBase uh, circuitry too, where it has that little LED. That LED really goes a long way. It's such a small, simple feature, but it makes a big difference when setting up AccuBase in how fast and accurately you can set it up. And then on the output side of the 5i Pro, to wrap things up on this model, you have six channels of RCA output, like I mentioned, your port for the ACR1 base knob, which is included, and you have those level controls for each of the outputs there. So you can independently control how much voltage is going out of each of those uh, RCA outputs. So no problem there. You can adjust those independently. When we take a look at the LC7i Pro, you know, this one's going to be somewhat familiar for a lot of you. If you are, have been using the LC7i, maybe it's something you've been installing for years. Many of you are familiar with it. The LC7i Pro kind of takes that same approach as the 2i to 2i Pro. Let's take the 7i and let's make it even better. So we've again applied that same theory and now you have independent load generation on every set of inputs. So you have independent uh, LMC or LGDs on each of your inputs there and you can set those however you need. You also have your signal summing. So now you have the ability to sum six channels of signal if need be. So you can bring in a high frequency, mid range and low frequency signal. And again, sum all of those back together if you needed to, to get a full range output out of channels one and two. This can also just be used as straight through. Maybe you have a system that has you know, a uh, full range front, full range rear and a factory subwoofer, and you just want to convert those over to low level signal, but make sure you're getting the hottest, cleanest signal possible. The LC7i can handle that as well. That AccuBase circuit, much like the 5i Pro, is that updated one with the LED, so it's just as fast and clean to set up. And again, because this is a Pro Series product, it does include that ACR1. 
So with the LC5i Pro and 7i Pro, we've really tried to think of everything that makes these, you know, even better than their predecessors, which was tough to do. So I hope you guys get a chance to check them out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. All right, here's the part of the show I like because we're going back to its core business of audio control. Nothing to take away from the speakers because that's obviously exciting as all heck. But amplifiers for me is kind of like the bread and butter of what audio control is all about. So of all the amplifiers that audio control currently is offering, where would you like to start, Matt? Yeah, Ben, I think the amps I want to talk about today and, and spend some time on are the ACX amplifiers. Um, our ACX series is what we call the all-weather amplifiers. And, you know, a lot of dealers kind of pigeonhole them into that category. They just look at them as, yeah, those are great for boats or motorcycles, side-by-sides, that sort of thing. And, of course, they are. They're IPX6 rated. I mean, you can actually get them wet. Um, they have an awesome warranty, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but what a lot of guys don't understand is that these are really a two birds with one stone amplifier. You know, if I was still a retailer and I needed a amplifier that was just a good all-around you know, I don't want to call it basic, but a non DSP amplifier, I would go ACX because they're not silver. They're not white. They don't say Marine on them. You know, they don't have pictures of water or boats on them. Um, you know, you can definitely use these amps in cars and lots of dealers do, but lots of guys are just not thinking of them that way. So just keep in mind, you could stock ACX amps and these could be your go-to, you know, kind of value six channel, five channel, four channel, two channel mono amplifiers, uh, because we have models in all those families. And then when a boat does come in the bay, maybe you're a shop that doesn't do boats and side by sides all the time. But when one does roll into the bay, you don't have to special order anything. You already have product in stock that is totally capable of handling that job. Those ACX amps have some great features in them. And the thing that I want people to really understand, though, is you know, these aren't just another power sports amp or micro amplifier, etc. cetera. Um, what these really are is the audio control take on a amplifier that can get wet. That's what it's really all about. You know, it would have been really easy for us to just go get some amplifier, put it in an enclosure that can get wet and call it a day. Um, but there's too many of those on the market already. There's so many amplifiers out there that are marine grade, quote unquote, and yes, they can get wet, etc. Well, some of them. Um, but a lot of them really don't perform that well. You know, they claim power numbers that they don't really achieve, or maybe they do achieve those power numbers, but they just sound dirty and terrible doing it. Um, the first thing that you'll notice when you use an ACX amplifier, or even if you just go on our website, audiocontrol.com, and check out the specs, you know, you'll see if you dig in a little bit that the signal noise ratio, super high, they're a high dampening factor. They're basically a sound quality amplifier that's hiding in power sport amp clothes you know i mean that's really the best way to think of them is if your customer is just looking for watts versus dollars and that's all they care about okay well maybe we're not for you and that's okay um, but if your customer cares about how it sounds and really likes good sounding uh music and, and audio systems and wants their car truck boat side by side jeep whatever to sound its best acx amps are definitely a, a good idea and uh, worth checking out for sure those ACX amplifiers are an absolute jewel, and you're right. They don't look like, you know, the white marine amplifiers that you would associate with that, you know, type of product. So absolutely small footprint, lots of power. Love it. Can we take a second and talk about the iconic LC and D series amplifiers as well, Matt? Yeah, Ben, you're right. I mean, those LC and D amplifiers are pretty awesome. Um, you know, they've been around for a little while. A lot of dealers have had a chance to play with them a little bit and install some of them. And if you have, you know, you know, if you if you know, you know, right? Um, the LC amplifiers, as far as OEM integration and just sheer raw power and how good they sound are tough to beat. Um, and those D-series amplifiers, I mean, it's, it's really the all-in-one package. Uh, integration, DSP, lots of power, sound quality, fairly small footprint, pretty hard to argue with. And uh, with some of the recent releases in our software and the one that we have coming soon, it's going to make even more guys uh, take a second look at those if they aren't already. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the time to go through every single product that Audio Control offers. But Matt just said a key acronym that I'm going to have to bring up because this is a big part of Audio Control's DNA. And that is, of course, DSP. Now, I want to remind our listeners that we have an entire other session a little bit later on the season dedicated to DSP. But I'd be remiss if I didn't give Matt an opportunity to at least touch on the fact that DSP is certainly part of the offering from Audio Control. 
Yeah, absolutely, Ben. I mean, DSP is at the core of what audio control does. Honestly, we've been doing DSP since before most people even knew what that acronym meant. Um, you know, and, and people can argue all day back and forth about which DSP is best and this and that. But the fact is, we are signal processing. We've been doing signal processing for a long time. You know, we made it okay to keep your factory radio way before it was cool or before you had to keep your factory radio. Um, and, you know, our DSPs to this day still continue to be one of the easiest to use, one of the, you know, fastest to learn, lowest learning curve um, DSPs out there that still pack a big punch. And, you know, again, value always comes up with me. It's important that this stuff performs really well, gives the dealer what they need to make the car sound great. It's important to me that it can be done in a short amount of time. I don't think anybody should be spending, you know, four hours tuning a, a couple thousand dollar job. Um, but then also that, you know, the customer can afford it because what good's the DSP if it's the best one in the world, but nobody can buy it, right? So that's really where we fit in is, you know, we are a really good all around DSP company, um, whether that is our, you know, full blown D61200 DSP six channel amplifier or our DM608 standalone DSP, you know, we kind of have something for everyone. And uh, the software, like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, has come a long way in the years that we've had that out. And we are continuing to pour enormous amounts of time, energy, and resources into making it the best that it can be. Um, you know, we'll have another update out soon for it. Those that were trying the beta, you know, thank you for getting your feedback back to us. And uh, just wait until the full version comes out. You're, you're going to love it. So thanks so much for checking this all out with us today. Um, for more information on a lot of these great products we talked about and everything else in the audio control line, uh, you can check out audiocontrol.com for all the details, specs, all that good stuff. That was Audio Control's Matt Palumbo giving us all the details on the new speaker lineup, both in the PNW series for uh, drivers, as well as both the Space and Spike series when it comes to new subwoofers. And of course, touching on a couple other great products, such as the brand new LC5i and LC7i, along with the amplifiers, DSPs, and whatnot. If you like anything that you heard, you want to find more details, Matt just splurged it, but I'm going to give an opportunity to put up the website right here. Audiocontrol.com is where you can find more information. And if you're a dealer in Canada, then you already know that Gemsen is the exclusive Canadian representation for audio control. So on that note, we have Mr. Dave Singh in the studio with us. And I've got some particular questions, Dave, for you that's going to help enhance or help Canadian dealers get on board the audio control train. And I'm going to start with this question, Dave. How does the warranty work with audio control and what makes this a special experience for Canadian dealers? Ben, Audio Control's warranty policy is one of the best in the industry. Um, the amplifiers, signal processors, um, and uh, various other electronics, such as equalizers and DSP units, are all covered by an unbeatable five-year warranty. Okay, That's got to be the best in the industry. With the new speakers and subwoofers, they all come with a one-year replacement warranty. And if you have them installed by an audio control authorized dealer, that warranty goes from one year to two year. So it's definitely a big benefit for anybody that's buying these speakers to go to their authorized dealer, have them installed for that additional one year of protection. And now Dave, as you can see with today's presentation, audio control has grown up. It has evolved into literally a complete line offering for dealers. And I'd like to hear in your words, how you feel about that and what Canadian dealers need to know when considering now this is a big decision to come on board with audio control because it can be that full solution for a store. Well, Ben, it's definitely great to see that audio control has gotten their wish for a number of years. They've been hinting at adding speakers and subwoofers to create a full lineup. And I think what they've done is created an excellent addition to the family. Um, some dealers may look at it and say, hey, we don't need another woofer or speaker line, but I believe the audio control approach that they've taken have done things in a unique way that makes them stand out differently than the crowd. For example, one of the things that I really appreciated is the thought that uh, goes into the installation of the component speakers, for example, where you can get the component speaker crossovers, which are individually bundled so you instead of having a two-way crossover you've got two separate crossovers a high pass and a low pass and you can mount those uh easily into locations but if you didn't want to screw that down or perhaps you don't have the space they even supply heavy duty heat shrink tubing that is labeled high pass and low pass which 
you can use uh, uh, to conceal the components of the crossover. All you got to do is unscrew the sides of the crossover, slide out the circuit board, put the heat shrink tubing on. There's a number of different other uh, things that they've done uh, that I think are really ingenious and unique. But uh, I have to be honest, the, what impressed me the most is when I picked up that component set box, I, I honestly thought there was bricks in it. The first time I picked it up, I said, well, you know, are, are you guys putting bricks in this thing? There are some massive motor assemblies on those speakers to give them the uh, drive power that they require. But, you know, they did a lot of cool design and engineering work to make sure that the speaker wasn't excessively deep. That magnet be, becomes more wider than it is deep. On, on the subwoofer side of things, I think the grills included with the subwoofers is a no-brainer. And having two series, one for slim applications, which is great for the Canadian market where we have so many pickup trucks and guys are looking for slim application subwoofers to go underneath the seat. I think those will do very well. And the Spike series, which is a more high-performance, you know, cast basket uh, uh, subwoofer is going to be ideal for anybody that's looking for lots of output and uh, a lot of power handling. So overall... These are great additions to the audio control family. I think dealers are going to receive them quite well, and uh, we're excited to see these. Once again, I want to thank both Matt Palumbo from Audio Control as well as Dave Singh from Gemsend coming in today talking about audio control. And my closing thoughts are as such. So many different brands in the market, so many moving pieces. But when a brand like Audio Control puts their resources towards developing a line, as in Matt's words, something they've been wanting to do in a long time, and coming to the table with an offering such as their new PNW series, as well as their Spike and Space uh, subwoofers, along with the warranty, like David mentioned, I think there's a lot here to chew on, guys. From a dealer perspective, Audio Control's always been that brand that had amazing products um, and details in their products that I think they're following uh, certainly shows that. But now, you know, along with the integration type products they have, and of course, the new DS, the, not the new, but the, the continuous support on DSP, this is a lot to think about, but, you know, based on today's presentation, I think you're going to find Audio Control is going to do just fine being the new full line uh, brand on the block. That's it for this CMA Networks episode brought to you by SiriusXM. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. There's never been a better time to have Sirius XM with over 150 channels in your vehicle. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with Sirius XM video on demand. What you love is on now.